afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. I, um, I would like to start by thanking Misha and all the organizers for the kind invitation. And uh, I apologize for not being there in person, but uh, we'll be next time with great pleasure. So uh, then uh, I would like to send my best greetings from Grenoble. And uh, I will present to you our works related to uh, various forms of Josephson effects for strongly correlated uh, quantum gases in one dimension. So the plan is the following. I will make a short introduction on the Josephson effect for ultra cold atoms. And then I will focus on a specific geometry that is a two wire geometry. And uh, I will present our result with two methods, so the Lattinger liquid theory and an exact solution. And in the second part of the talk, I will present um, a somehow in principle unrelated uh, uh, problem that is uh, the problem of a ring with current flowing onto it. And will, it will turn out that it is a sort of the dual of the Josephson effect. And finally, I will make some link to quantum shock wave dynamics that uh, emerges uh, in this system. And the works uh, uh, which are related to, the, to, the, to this talk of today are listed uh, here below. So, um, and let me also make a small comment. So indeed, this is a workshop about impurities. So there are, um, first uh, idea is that if you take a barrier, it's a localized impurity. And we had a talk by Grigory Astrakarczyk explaining uh, all some effects associated to that. And also I announced, but I will detail more, uh, that another type of quantum impurity will emerge in this problem. So stay tuned. So let me uh, first start from the microscopic model. So we are going to focus on a one-dimensional geometry that is uh, atoms uh, um, confined in, in a tight waveguide. In this case, um, the interaction are well described by a delta potential, one-dimensional delta potential, with a coupling constant which is related to the three-dimensional uh, scattering length, with some correction due to the confinement effects, as demonstrated by Maxim Olshani uh, some time ago. So the overall model Hamiltonian it's a lib linear model with uh, an additional confining potential. Uh, which makes uh, this model non-integrable. So a uh, while for uh, in absence of the interaction potential, as we have already seen in various talks before, uh, this model is exactly solvable by beta ansatz. And uh, uh, just a matter of notation, as usual, I will uh, you define gamma, the coupling strength, which uh, um, somehow uh, guides us all through the regimes from weak to strong interactions. And in particular, let me mention that it's, uh, we can reach the strong coupling regime where the interactions are somehow have a, the strongest effect, uh, either at large values of this coupling constant G or also at weak densities. And uh, uh, quite interestingly, uh, all, all regimes of interaction from weak to strong are achievable experimentally. So then um, now about the Josephson effect um, um, in the ultra cold atom community, it is possible to realize the Bose-Josephson junction by connecting uh, two matter waves. For example, the so-called external Josephson effect is realized by using a double well uh, separated by a barrier potential. And in this case, um, if uh, it, let's say the geometry is quite confined, uh, we can uh, use uh, a two-mode model where we separate the amplitude occupation of each well uh, from an orbital, from two orbitals, phi one and phi two, which describes the typical occupancy of each well. And then uh, the dynamics, the resulting dynamics is just the one of this amplitude uh, psi one and psi two, thus realizing uh, what uh, Feynman was proposing as the basic model for the Josephson effect. So essentially one introduces a tunnel coupling kappa and then the energy of each well and the interaction in each well. And then the equations for the relative number and relative phase in this model correspond to the Josephson equations. And uh, um, as uh, Augustus Merck and co-workers have demonstrated a long time ago, 
um, the effect of interactions gives rise to various uh, dynamical regimes. Uh, one is the one of the Josephson oscillations, where there is a population dynamics from which one to the other. And the second one is a self-trapping regime where the particles uh, tend to st stay trapped in one of the two wells. Uh, and this was demonstrated experimentally in Marcus Obertaler group uh, also some time ago. So then uh, this uh, uh, model so far was deduced from the gross pitayevsky equation, hence it is a, a classical model, but uh, there exists also the quantum regime of the Josephson junction, as it can be described by a Bose-Hubbard model, a two-site Bose-Hubbard model. In this case, you can reach an non-classical uh, regimes during the dynamics. So for example, if you start from, from an initial coherent state and then suddenly uh, make the barrier very high, then you can realize uh, squeezing and also uh, some type of macroscopic superposition of phase states. And uh, of course, there are, um, this is a very fragile state and uh, there has been a lot of studies about the, the coherence sources and the, the, the fate of these states at uh, long times. And uh, so the, this uh, um, basic model was essentially zero dimensional, but then uh, you may also consider more advanced models where, for example, you describe um, more energy levels in the two wells. And in that case, it has been demonstrated there, that there can be collapse and revivals of Josephson oscillation and in general, a loss of coherence. So, um, we have decided to revisit this uh, Josephson junction paradigm by considering instead of two, say, zero dimensional or uh, spherical traps, uh, uh, the coupling among two, two one dimensional tubes. And uh, since we are in a one dimensional world, uh, quantum fluctuation will be very important, uh, in general, not negligible, and uh, this will be taken into account in the model. So um, there are essentially two ways you can couple uh, two wires. One is the one of the Vienna experiments where the wires are parallel and many, many results have been reported for this, uh, for this type of experiments, including preternalization, full counting statistics, very high order correlation, also relaxation of Josephson oscillation. And all this realizes a sign Gordon model. Uh, in in uh, our work, instead, we will consider it another the other possible geometry, you know, the way to couple the two wires is a head to tails. And this is obtained by taking a single uh, cylinder and cutting it in half. For example, in Florence, there has been experiments, not really in the one dimensional regime, uh, where uh, the Josephson oscillation were studied in this uh, type of configuration for a Fermi gas in the BCSP C crossover. And also in that case, uh, some damping of Josephson oscillation was observed. And also um, they studied the role of phase slips in the dynamics. So essentially we are going to, to tighten this geometry to the very maximum to go deep into the 1D regime and to put bosons in the model instead of fermions. So, okay, so in, in this case, when we are uh, treating bosons and uh, in one dimension, in, uh, fluctuations are very important. In this case, uh, we can never have the true of diagonal long range order, but we always have some phase fluctuations which affect the coherence mm -hmm. along each wire. And in particular, uh, one has, um, or at best, a quasi long range order at zero temperature. That is uh, some decay of the coherence, uh, of the spatial coherence, fixed by one parameter that is the capital kappa, which is uh, called the Lattinger exponent, the Lattinger parameter. Okay, so what happens in fact is that flag quantum fluctuations become more and, and more important and increasing interaction. And that's where the regime where the Lattinger parameter becomes smaller. So uh, then um, we decided uh, uh, to describe uh, uh, directly the strongly interacting regime. And after our work, there was a separate work by uh, the group in Padua where they also treated the same geometry in the weakly interacting regime, but um, I will not present that one. So let us consider a set of uh, two wires with uh, 
uh, intermediate to strong interaction uh, of the bosons in each of them. And to describe uh, the dynamics of the system, we will use the Lattinger liquid theory. So um, this is, uh, as you already heard, and you, most of you already know, it's a quantum hydrodynamic theory for the density and phase fluctuation fields. So for each of the two wires, we introduce a phase field phi associated to the velocity of the fluid and the phase field theta, whose gradient is associated to the density fluctuations. And then we describe each uh, wire or each tube uh, from with a Lattinger liquid Hamiltonian. And then, uh, so with the parameters, uh, in the Lattinger parameter kappa, as well as uh, the typical sound velocity propagating in each of the wires, which depends, for example, on the, on the density, on the interaction strength in each of the, of the tubes, which for simplicity, we will assume to be equal. And then we introduce a tunnel coupling among the two wires with a, a, a tunnel constant uh, Ej. And the, the coupling, the tunnel coupling occurs at the point where the two wires touch. So it is a cosinus of the phase difference between the phase field at the position of the barrier in the first wire minus the phase field of the second uh, wire at the position of the barrier. So this is, of course, an approximation of the full microscopic model. In particular, it's valid at sufficiently low energy where uh, the excitation spectrum is linear. Uh, we are also making a second approximation. That is, uh, we are assuming that uh, the uh, Josephson tunneling connecting the two wires is a perturbation. And so, for example, we will describe the dynamics, so the collective modes in each wire, uh, taking the infinite barrier limit. Okay, so then um, we specifically develop the Lattinger liquid approach for the case of finite wire. That means the excitation spectrum in each wire is discrete. Um, and in particular, then uh, we, we can expand in modes each uh, operator for phase or, or density fluctuations. And we separate out the so-called zero mode, the one at uh, lowest energy. And uh, um, we have then a, a set of uh, higher excited modes. And in particular, the physical meaning of these zero modes is the modes that count number and global phase. So if we define uh, relative numbers and relative phase operators, these uh, will be uh, the operators which define the dynamics of this uh, Josephson junction. So this is the key point. And in fact, this operator N and this operator phi zero are to very good approximation conjugate variables and describe the uh, quantum particle, the quantum impurity. Uh, the rest of the excitation modes, the phonon modes that exist in each of the two wires, uh, consist or provide a quantum bath for this particle. And there is, in this case, a coupling to the momentum of the excitations. It's uh, similar to the caldera legged model known in condensed matter. Most often the coupling is to the position instead of the momentum, but it's not really very important. It is a detail. So it is, uh, um, so uh, to summarize the Lattinger liquid approach models the dynamics of these uh, two coupled wires as the dynamics of a quantum Josephson junction uh, in the presence of a bath of excitation modes. So, um, this uh, uh, Josephson, the dynamics of this junction depends crucially on the values of the parameters of the jun junction, in particular of the tunnel energy, the Josephson energy, and also the quantum energy associated to the, let's say, uh, number relative number fluctuations of the junction. There is also a control parameter, this excitation number, which fixes the imbalance, the relative uh, imbalance among the two wires. So, in particular, what happens at uh, strong, at increasing interaction is that these parameters of the junction, effective parameter of the junction will change. In particular, the quantum energy increases as it depends on the Lattinger parameter kappa 
which uh, decreases at increasing interaction. And uh, on the other hand, at increasing interaction, the tunnel energy decreases. And uh, this uh, second effect is due to the fact that uh, the tunnel energy is renormalized by the quantum fluctuations. And in particular, as we had demonstrated uh, in a um, previous paper, we have that the, 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 the um, tunnel amplitude decreases at increasing interaction. So um, then, um, then we have to, we can study the dynamics of this Josephson junction in the various regime. Let's say the, the most usual one, the one which is uh, easier to connect to the um, intuition or to what we are used to for Josephson oscillation is the regime where the quantum energy is much smaller than the Josephson energy. In this case, um, we have that the relative phase is a well-defined uh, quantity and that we have, um, and then when we would like to describe, for example, the dynamics of the junction by fixing some initial imbalance and looking at the oscillation, we observe Josephson oscillation, as, uh, which are damped as a function of time. This damping originates from the presence of the bus. And uh, it's due to the fact essentially that during the dynamics, you create uh, uh, also some uh, phonon excitation in the wires. So um, interestingly, uh, at a very weak interaction, the damping rate vanishes because the, it, the damping rate has the kappa, the Latinger parameter at the denominator. And hence uh, we recover the Grosbitayevsky regime where you have perfect uh, Josephson oscillations, uh, undamped oscillations. On the other hand, if we increase interaction, the Josephson energy decreases and the quantum energy increases. So we are going to go towards a regime where this usual Josephson oscillation are more and more damped. Um, and then, so there is, uh, let's say, an intermediate regime where the quantum and Josephson energy are of the same order, which is very difficult to describe. But there is the other extreme regime, the one where the quantum energy dominates over the Josephson energy, uh, which is uh, another regime where we can make a relatively simple prediction. So in this regime, which uh, we call the, the qubit regime, um, the relative number is very well defined and uh, we have a huge phase fluctuation. So then the, um, the, the, the most useful picture to represent uh, the system is in terms of parabolas, uh, quite similar to the one Lars has uh, used in his talk just before. And so each parabola, each branch is associated to a given value of the relative number. So in fact, then when we have the dynamics in this regime, it's very close to the Rabi oscillation regime of a quantum system. And the oscillation frequency is just fixed by the Rabi frequency. Um, within our model, we have no damping in this regime because the energy scale associated to the phonon modes is too large. So the Latinger liquid theory predicts undamped Rabi oscillation of the particle imbalance in this quantum regime. Okay, so um, do you have questions so far? Or are you still listening? I have question. Okay. Um, phase, is it quantum operator here? You use head or semi-classical? It's uh, in general, it's quantum. Uh, thanks for the question, Misha. So in general, it's quantum, but yeah. Jane, for you. I did not uh, specify, but uh, in the um, Josephson regime, we can use uh, a semi-classical description. Uh -huh. And this is actually what we tried to illustrate uh, in this picture where we have uh, some average trajectory and then we have some width, which correspond to some uh, fluctuations around. So ba yeah. basically your wires never depleted. You have uh, both wires with many particles. You have fluctuations, which consist of many particles, but you are usually not in a regime where you say depleted and you have one atom in one wire and two n atoms in the other wire is a fluctuation, then you need quantum mechanics. But otherwise you don't care. Just phase and n are canonically conjugated and, and that's it. You can remove heads from both kind of 
in, in this regime, yes. And uh, uh -huh. uh, let's say that uh, this is the simplest situation, but uh, let uh -huh. me, yes, the, we can treat the strongly depleted uh, wire in the tonks girardot limit, because in that, and maybe, I mean, we can may uh, develop uh, other schemes also to describe the general regime, but let's say within our approach so far, we have described the simplest situation. But so for sure, uh, what we have done is also to study the exact solution, which you can treat with arbitrary imbalance among the two wells uh, in the limit of infinite interactions. So in this case, uh, we have access of an exact uh, um, solution for the arbitrary quantum dynamics. Uh, on the, uh, so this is the regime called the tonks girardot regime. Uh, where the Latinger parameter value is uh, kappa equal to one, and where we use uh, the so-called uh, Bose-Fermi mapping and the solution uh, developed, uh, so the initial solution was uh, invented by Marvin Girardot in the 60s, and the time-dependent uh, Bose-Fermi mapping was introduced uh, in the years 2000, which always by Girardot and Wright. And so in this case, it is possible to solve exactly the dynamics just by mapping onto the dynamics of a non-interacting Fermi gas in the same potential. So yes, the idea was to test all the various approximations that we have made in the Lattinger liquid solution on a known limit where both solutions holds um, the Lattinger parameter is one. So the Lattinger liquid theory holds still but we can also have access to an exact solution. So then we have designed a specific uh, geometry which uh, um, describes uh, the two coupled wires as uh, indicated in the figure where we take a double well separated by the delta barrier potential and we choose initially some step such that uh, we have more particles on one side than on the other. And uh -huh. uh, yes? I have also a kind of question related to history now, probably. Why people say that time-dependent mapping was introduced by Girardot? Indeed, people mention this, but if you have free fermions uh, in external potential, well, you, you know that you made a and body solution out of uh, the Slater determinant of single particle solution. Same, same kind of here. Why people say that Gerardo invented this in 90s? Okay, uh, so is, what is it something? Uh, no, yeah, so what he, no, he, so uh, of course the solution for a fermionic time dependent problem was probably invented much, much earlier. In this paper by Marvin and, and um, you want right? Uh, what he demonstrated is essentially that at all time, it's maybe trivial, eh? but uh, one needed to say it <laughs> at some point that for any time of the dynamics, the cusp condition which fixes that the uh, wave function must vanish when two particle meets must be satisfied. And hence, this allows to solve all type of time dependent problems. And of course, then what is most interesting is to calculate quantities that are not uh, fermionic ones. And in that case, then, uh, um, although you have this <sighs> determinant, you have to suffer a little bit more if you want to arrive to some observables, because then you have to, to deal with, uh, with some uh, many body integration or, okay, or develop some, some uh, strategies for solution. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so, so anyway, uh, the, the key point indeed is that any, at any time, this solution is valid, is still of fermionic form. And uh, we have just to solve the problem of given fermions in given potential. And uh, under a time dependent potential, we have just to follow the time evolution of each of these orbitals. In our specific case, we have designed this geometry. We have imposed a quench. So at the time zero, we prepare in some ground state the system. We can also describe the finite temperature as well. And then at the time zero plus, we put down the bottom of the right well, and then we let the system evolve. And in particular, what will happen is that uh, some fermions will flow from the left well to the right well. And uh, we follow the dynamics of this relative number of fermions among the two wells. 
And this is the some oscillations. So, and this is a, a typical example of the solution. In particular, uh, we see that uh, um, at uh, zero temperature, we observe undamped oscillations. And by the way, for the parameters, uh, we could uh, choose for the specific uh, calculation, and which are very typical, in fact, for the Tonks Girardot regime, we are very deeply into the quantum regime. So we are not in the, let's say we are in the Rabi regime. And then what we also found that if you perform the same calculation at finite temperature, um, so starting from a finite temperature state and then evolving it uh, in time, uh, we find that there is damping of the oscillations, which is not predicted by the Lattinger liquid theory. In what sense? Uh, because the Lattinger liquid theory in this regime um, has a too large spacing among the um, excitation modes. And hence, uh, it doesn't, there is no, no but, it's not a true but, it doesn't give rise to any damping. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, what what is the period? What sets the period of the oscillations in the Tongs Girardot regime? Um, so it's uh, very close to the uh, it's very close to the it's the Rabi frequency for this uh, for this model. So it's, it's the Rabi frequency. So, so yes. it is essentially the, the same thing as the barrier. Yes, it is the barrier. barrier. Yeah, the... don't spoil. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in fact, yeah, but you, I think you guessed. The, the point is that uh, we have, uh, yes. So, okay, so in order to understand, uh, in order to understand what is happening and what, from what this damping and this dynamics uh, comes from, another way to represent is, is to look at some type of spectral function where we look at the contribution uh, of all type of excitations in the frequency momentum plane. And um, we see that uh, Lattinger liquid has, uh, is uh, just a small, is a, a delta function, small dots uh, for discrete spectrum, while the tonks girardot regime has uh, some broadening, which is actually um, quite well known because it, it's the broadening of the spectral function at finite momentum. And in particular, if we look at the spectral function very, very closely at very low moment, as very small energies so related to the typical scales giving rise to the damping, we see that we have extra modes. And it is these modes associated to the presence of the barrier, of the tunnel barrier, that are responsible for the damping. Is um, just that the Lattinger liquid theory did not have them into account. So now, Vadim, if you have uh, extra comments. No. Okay, then yeah. I will. Yeah, just, right. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably okay. But it looks like, again, it's, it's a pretty permanent system in a sense. So it's, um, uh, you, you can use a different, picture you understand that we all understand in the free fermion theory uh it is individual fermionic particles that get across the barrier and then if you try to understand the oscillations in terms of those particles then the only way i i can see the system oscillating is that the fermionic particle gets through the barrier uh reaches the other side of the well you have a finite size system so it reaches the the wall of the confining potential of your quantum well uh bounces back comes back to the barrier and that would define some sort of uh time constant in, in your problem uh in in this fermionic language i don't necessarily see a simple argument as to why the barrier itself should set, set any time constant. Uh, uh, although, yeah, I'm, I'm not insisting on that, but it's, it is tricky to figure out how how the barrier is responsible for, for any oscillations in, in the fermionic picture. Okay, so maybe what uh, it's a way to, um, to imagine that in the fermionic picture is that uh, you have uh, that if you would take just the infinite barrier you would have degenerate levels on the two half systems. 
while when you turn down a little bit the barrier, you have this uh, little bit of breaking of the gender. Yes, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I understand. So you, so, you, so, you have splitting between even and odd. Yes. Even and odd modes. Yes, so it is this type of energy scales that are, of course, associated to the barrier and uh, that uh, have, give rise to this type of uh, damping. Okay. Yeah, they, they, those I, yeah, okay, those I understand. They're, they're also related to the system size, of course, yeah, but to the better strength as well. Yes, yes, to bo both. Say okay, yes. all right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that was uh, the first part of my talk uh, is, um, so we have understood uh, a lot of things about uh, these Josephson oscillations uh, among the two coupled one dimensional wires. The Josephson junction itself is like an impurity particle and uh, which has uh, some type of dynamics uh, associated, first of all, to the type of initial conditions that you fix and also depending on the, on the bath. And we have understood um, what type of damping can be uh, can occur depending on the regimes, and uh, um, and we have identified in particular the parameter regimes where the oscillations are undamped. So now uh, let me um, well change the geometry and turn onto a ring, a ring separated in this case by a very small barrier. So in this case, uh, what we are going to, to search for is a, a sort of a grail in condensed matter physics where the coherent quantum phase slips. So that was in this concept, um, at least in the condensed matter community was invented by Moy and Nazarov. And uh, they were uh, explaining it as, as follows. So, if you have the Josephson effect in the quantum regime of the Josephson junction, you have this radio oscillation, a coherence transfer of population between the two superconductors. And now consider uh, like uh, the dual of the system, where uh, instead of having a coherent transfer of particles, you have a coherent transfer of vortices of flux or fluxes and they uh, named these uh, coherent quantum phase slips. So in our case, uh, these uh, uh, vortices or fluxes will be quantum of angular momentum. So, and let me now present uh, how we can realize this uh, in a, a ring, uh, in a one dimensional ring with ultra cold atoms. So, and then, uh, so essentially, um, let us consider this geometry now. Uh, we take this ring, uh, we take a localized barrier, and then we make uh, some phase imprinting along uh, the ring in such a way that we imprint a current state. For example, uh, angular momentum L equal one. And then uh, we, the, the question we ask it is, uh, what, uh, the, what fixes the fate of this uh, persistent current state? In presence of a barrier, is angular momentum is not conserved and something will happen. So at essentially two things uh, you may think of are the oscillations of the current, because you can oscillate between one and minus one, or you may imagine that this current will somehow decay and uh, the, the bosons on the ring will stop rotating. So we have decided to follow the current dynamics. And this was done combining various methods because uh, the answer of what happens depends very crucially on the regime. So the, the first regime that we have considered uh, to warm up is the uh, weakly interacting gas. And we, we can use the gross pitayevsky equation to very good approximation. And then we, we follow what we um, define the integrated current, the average current all along the, the ring. And we follow it as a function of time. So for example, for a very weak barrier, nothing almost happens. And we have uh, uh, very small oscillations around the value of uh, the average current one. And then if you increase the barrier, at some point something happens and the oscillations start to be not around one, but around zero. And for a stronger barrier, we have a very well-defined oscillations. And <coughs> it was a very uh, curious triangular shape, but uh, let me come to the shape uh, later on. Okay, so um, in this regime, in fact, what's happening is that uh, um, 
what we just witnessed, and it can be reproduced by changing the various types of parameters. For example, on the right, I have another type of dynamics with different parameters, but the same physics, is that um, for very, very weak barrier, we are in the equivalent of the self-trapped regime of the Josephson junction. And for larger barrier, we see Josephson oscillation of angular momentum state. So this is not just an idea, but we, we, we showed that if we make a two-mode model for angular momentum states, we reproduce very, very accurately the gross pitayevsky solution. It's essentially the difference between the dashed and the, and the solid line in this right figure. And uh, so then the triangular oscillation are related to the fact that uh, shock waves are generated in this fluid. And I will show you more at the, the end if there is time. Um, OK, then uh, if we turn on the temperature and but we stick to weak interaction, instead we see some uh, uh, different uh, type of dynamics. That is, uh, essentially, we, we lose the self-trapping regime. and we. We see that uh, the, the current is either it is uh, simply damped or it oscillates and then is uh, damped. And there is a no monotonous damping uh, strength uh, at the intermediate barrier where we change regime, sort of. Um, and so in this regime, what happens, um, the way that we lose uh, the, the current, the persistent current, um, well, to, to see it, we decided to follow one trajectory because these uh, finite temperature calculations are a simulation over several trajectories. And then uh, this is one uh, trajectory which is very uh, exemplary in this sense. So you see the current is more or less around one and then at some point it jumps to zero. And then if we follow the density and phase of this condensate, we see that there is uh, some um, type of excitation I have, I hope you see it. It's a, a dark line uh, in, the, in the yellow uh, circle. At some point, this excitation, which is actually a soliton, uh, reaches uh, the barrier position, which is the central dark line. And at this point, we see a clear phase slip. So the phase jumps <coughs> and yes, sir. Okay, maybe I, I thought there was a question. And so in fact, what happens is just that at the moment where this soliton is reflected by the barrier, it's uh, um, velocity vanishes, the density vanishes, and then we can let the angular momentum go out from the system. So this is a, a, a phase slip, but it is an incoherent phase slip. It's uh, thermally activated by uh, some thermal noise that we have added in the simulation. So in the in the weakly interacting regime, we see that the, there will be decay of the current and is due to, to phase slips. Um, then let's, uh, as a last point, uh, let us consider the strongly interacting regime. In this case, um, we use again the Lattinger liquid theory and uh, it's quite beautiful that there is uh, a duality between density and phase if you change a kappa onto one over kappa. So essentially it's, uh, um, essentially, it's very similar as the situation that I described in the first part of the talk. In this case, since we describe a ring, we have a single phase field, a single density fluctuation field. And we have an applied flux, which introduces rotation, this omega. And the barrier is described, the weak barrier is described as a backscattering term in the Latin liquid Hamiltonian. And the backscattering term is the cosinus of theta, which is the, the field associated to the density fluctuation. And so we have a precise dual of the Josephson tunnel Hamiltonian if I change the operator phi with the operator two theta. And actually the, the barrier indeed, even a small barrier induces Friedel oscillation and it is very well under control. For example, the typical phase shift associated to the presence of the barrier and the, as we can obtain from the exact solution. But okay, so um, this shows that we, got, we end up again onto a type of uh, Josephson junction problem where we have another quantum particle. And um, in this case, uh, um, 
the quantum particle is defined by the operator theta zero, the zero mode of the, of the, of the field theta. And the current operator J is the conjugate to this uh, theta zero. And also in this case, we have, uh, we can predict uh, all possible regimes of this junction, including the Josephson regime, the semi-classical one, and the Rabi regime. So the one nice and different thing is that the damping rate decreases in this case at increasing interaction at different from the two wire case. So somehow it is uh, um, possible also to be in the Rabi regime. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, um, the dynamics associated to these uh, oscillations of the current are exactly coherent quantum phase slips because they just couple two states at fixed value of angular momentum. And this is actually the working principle of the famous uh, flux qubit, which has also been proposed for ultra cold atoms. So um, again, um, back up the, with the exact solution, uh, we calculated the, the dynamics of this integrated current as a function of time, and we have found these uh, coherent oscillations of the current. So we are here in the Rabi regime, and uh, what this type of oscillation that we see is the uh, realization of with ultra cold gases of the coherent quantum phase slip. And for example, various things that can be checked is that the frequency is proportional to the barrier strength as it is expected by the latin liquid prediction. And one also very nice feature that uh, I think nobody knew uh, before our work is that uh, uh, now we have a microscopic insight of what is this coherent quantum phase slip because we see that it involves a multiple particle hole excitation. It involves the whole thermosphere oscillating. So I don't know if, the, if this is of direct use for superconductors, but I found it very beautiful because uh, um, finally there is a way to visualize this uh, uh, this uh, coherent quantum phase leaps uh, in a way that at least I can understand. Okay, so I think I have uh, uh, maybe uh, one, do I have two minutes to speak about shock waves? Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay, so then the very last point is about these uh, strange triangular oscillations. We were initially very puzzled by this shape of the, um, of the current, integrated current as a function of time, till we looked in detail at the density profiles of this, uh, um, of this wave front. And uh, if we are now imagining the very, very high barrier regime where for a good approximation, you can put the barrier to infinity and nothing changes. So we turn the ring onto a box with hard walls. And in this case, you essentially, it's the drawing I have put up there. You have a flowing, a flow, so a, a, a fluid which flows, but it hits a barrier and then it's bounced back. And in, in, t, in this uh, uh, bouncing back, it a wave front forms that is actually a shock wave. And you recognize it from many, many, um, uh, many, let's say, uh, aspects. For example, in the in front of the shock wave, you have a train, a soliton train forming. It is this blue wiggles here. And also, you can uh, find a shock wave like solution by solving the in the weakly interacting regime, the Gross Pitayevsky equation. And also, there is a typical relation between the density jump and the velocity imprinted in the flow with respect to the sound velocity. So this discontinuity is extremely sharp in the hydrodynamic regime, but it's healed in, if we have the full gross pitayevsky theory, which has all wavelengths, all possible accessible wavelengths. And um, so this is the picture at the weak interaction, but with what was really extremely surprising is that this type of dynamics is essentially the same at all interactions. So we have uh, compared uh, um, with the, the dynamics at intermediate and strong interaction using various methods in addition to the tonks girardot solution, which I have already presented. We have also used the generalized hydrodynamics uh, solution to describe the dynamics at intermediate interaction. And in all cases, we see a collapse 
of the current dynamics, even at large amplitudes, and the collapse of the shape of the wave front. Of course, uh, there are also some uh, um, nice differences in the details of the shape of the wave front. And this is uh, uh, shown here in the left bottom left panel, where we see uh, the solution at weak interaction and the solution at very strong interactions. At weak interaction, as I anticipated, we see a um, soliton train in front of the wave front, while at strong interaction, we see, um, well, uh, we, we don't see solitons, but we interpret it, in fact, as being delocalized solitons. And uh, this is uh, um, understood if you look at the type of excitations that you have for a small quench, we see that we can excite a lib2 modes, and this type of modes are also related to some type of solitons. So uh, let's say that uh, with this protocol, we are realize the quantum analog of shock waves, and we bring it uh, up to very strong interactions. And there was a, a work also from the Australian team um, last year on the same topic, uh, uh, essentially a different proposal for creating uh, shock waves, but uh, uh, similar, similar ideas of looking at all interaction strengths. Okay, so with this, uh, I am, uh, con am concluding the talk. I have presented the two types of Josephson oscillation, the Josephson oscillation of particle imbalance among two one-dimensional wires, and the Josephson oscillation of current states uh, on a ring. And uh, I would like, uh, well, okay, sorry, a small outlook still. Um, we have seen, uh, first of all, that uh, there is uh, uh, quantum impurity dynamics going on in the Josephson junction. And we have seen only the simplest one, but maybe after this workshop, we should go back and uh, see what uh, other types of uh, quantum impurity dynamics uh, could be implementable in our Josephson junction setup. Also, uh, we have not studied, but clearly the self-trapping the oscillation disappear at increasing interaction in the two wire geometry. Uh, so it would be interesting to understand why and when this happens. We could go to multi-component systems, uh, um, also take into account uh, a higher excited modes, which is probably relevant for experiments. And of course, we would be very happy if uh, any of you can uh, see it experimentally at some point. Okay, so let me finish by thanking the collaborators of uh, all my collaborators in general, and in particular, the people who contributed to this work. Uh, Juan Polo Gomez, uh, Frank Ecking, uh, uh, Veronica Wuffinger, and then uh, the uh, Maxime Olshani in Boston, and the LPL team in uh, Viltanoz, uh, Romain Dubessy, Paolo Pedri, and Hélène Perrin. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. Questions? Yes, I can start. Yes, Christoph. Okay. I'm Christoph. Okay. Hi, Christoph. And <laughs> nice talk. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So, uh, on the first part, um, with the oscillations. Uh, yeah. So, which? So, in which observable do you see these oscillations? So, this is in in the what the, the in the current or. Uh, this one is just a particle. You, if you can count uh, how many particles you have in each. Uh, okay, that, group, okay. So it's really fine. particles. Okay, yes. I see. I see. I see. I see. Um, yeah, I'm I have to think a little bit how one would do this then, uh, unless you have some uh, yeah very local uh, uh, readout. Okay. Okay. Then the next question is um, uh, you, you. Now this is about. Uh, um, a head on tail, tail on head, uh, yes. tail on well, how do you call that? Uh, um, head to uh, tail. Or head to tail, head. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, what about uh, uh, the similar to the situation of the Schmidt-Meyer group, parallel tubes, but in, in this limit of strong interactions? Have you have you looked into this or um, myself? No, but uh, I think uh, uh, Fabian uh, Esler was uh, working on that at some point. So, the, why haven't I? looked at, at that at strong interaction is that um, I think it's not doable with the same technique. Somehow I, you realize uh, 
something like a ladder. So you have uh, many points where you can tunnel. So you create uh, something. Right, it's a ladder like, situation. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Experimentally, this is uh, actually we are gearing up to doing this, uh, and that that that's easier for us. The, the ah. head to tail is uh, uh, we have to discuss how we can do whether we can do that uh, in this uh, how the way we do uh, okay. these tubes, yeah, these one D systems. Um, I'm can not I just saying. Can comment? I mean, given the fact that I'm also here, so so we indeed looked at this uh, both. Mm -hmm at uh, weak interactions and strong interactions. So it would be good to discuss offline. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. A question? <clears throat> um, so uh, you didn't mention this, but um, were this quantum slips uh, observed experimentally, you know, in any systems? Uh, in any system because i know there were proposals to see them in you know disordered uh, rings but i don't know if actually they observe them or not um i think that is still not complete so i i did i'm not in the condensed matter uh joseph jackson business so but the last news that i had there were some experiments hinting at that but some people were not convinced. But uh, I may inquire more at asking my colleagues uh, about that if uh, it's really uh, an important key point to say. Okay, thank you. May I ask a question? Yes, yes. I, can, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, th thank you for the interesting talk. Um, my question is actually on the slides. That's why I decided to ask, and it's quite naive. So, like, you, you show this very nice oscillations of the particle number for zero temperature. Yes. And and my question is, like, why are they so? Why is it completely not undamped? I would assume that every fermion actually has its own energy, uh, right? And uh, if you have many of them, I, I would assume some more incoherent behavior. Could okay. you comment on this, please? Yes. So this is a small imbalance, small delta V0. But uh, I have in the backup slides somewhere a larger imbalance, zero temperature. And then you see, let me try to go to the right backup. Yeah. So for example, this one. Uh, you see that um, bigger imbalance and uh, um, longer times, uh, you see some, uh, you see that they sort of deface the fermions. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? We have many people online. So, okay, if we don't have anything, I, I, then... I, I have oh. a, one, one, one more quick question. So again, on the first part, I had, had, had okay. to tail. Um, so can you show again the oscillations for, um, so in, the, in, in particular, in the limit of zero temperature and strong interactions? Yes, it's this one, yes. This is this one, yeah. And this is really basically my, my, I mean, basically, I mean, you, you probably said it, yeah, but basically, let me say it in my words, it's basically one atom going back and forth, sort of, right? Because the other atoms, what can they do? Probably or, uh, with this small imbalance, yes, a few of them. Now we had uh, 100 particles in this uh, calculation. So, well, uh, I should check if, but it's a few, very few, yes. Yeah, it's very few. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say naively in the limit of very strong interactions can only be sort of the last atoms uh, participating, yeah, sort of yes, at the yes. junction directly, yeah? Yes. Yeah, okay. But this is N over N, no, okay, okay. And it's, mm -hmm. okay. All yeah, right, thanks it's a lot. A sort yeah. of effect, you're welcome. It's a sort of effect of strong interactions. So you, you are feeling all these levels of the, 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 the bosons are fermionized, so 
the dynamics is constrained by this. Exactly, yeah. it, is, it is greatly constrains uh, the dynamics. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's the that uh, these these curves now are for strong interactions and different temperatures, sort of. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the temp zero temperature limit shows you essentially no damping. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions?